All right. Hi, this is Joette with Party People. Nope. <laughs> I am Party People. I'm an event decorator. But um, today I'm joining you as BalloonCoach.com. As you can see, I can wear many hats. <laughs> and I was just sending a message to a client right before we got this uh, webinar going. Um, today I'm really excited. We have Mike Harris with us with Balloon Shop Pro. Um, he was demoing it at World Balloon Convention, and I didn't even have an opportunity to get to see the demo because we were so busy. And then on top of that, when I returned home, many of the folks that do our webinars and our coaching clients had asked um, if they could get a demo from Mike. So, Mike, thank you for your time and no being with us. We have just about one more minute um, until we'll get going. So let me know your name and where you're joining us with. If you're on live, we've got Di from Australia. And we have um, Tamika, who is from Illinois. Um, Francine from Detroit, Michigan. Tammy Corzine from Ohio. And um, Lenny from Canada so far. Um, hi, Melody. Melody's joining us from Missouri. So great to have you guys here. Um, Mike, are you all set and ready to go? I certainly am. Wonderful. I know many of the people who are joining us today or had signed up for the webinar said they might be a little bit late or that they were going to be having to watch the recording. So um, we are recording this. Anybody, as Mike is going through this, if you have questions of specific things he's doing, go ahead and put a message up. And then from time to time, I'll interrupt and ask him your questions. So um, if you have a specific question that comes up, let me know. Part of it, I'm not going to you know, interrupt him every five seconds, but I'll make sure from time to time to ask him your questions. All right. So, Joette with Balloon Coach, we offer coaching, webinars, um, and a couple of wonderful workshops that are coming up in Chicago this summer. So, if you've not been to my website before, I just encourage you to go to ballooncoach.com and check it out. Kick the tires, read the free blog, and enjoy. At this time, I'm going to change presenters and give it over to Mike so that he can share his screen with us and tell us all about this program that he has um, to help your business um, track numbers and take care of things. All right, so. Hmm. Have I got that, Joette? Um, we're almost there. Just had a, for some reason my computer was making it kind of small today. <laughs> all right. All right, so do me a favor, Di, Francine, Tammy, just give me a thumbs up and let me know that currently you are seeing my screen. Whoops. With, um, and now I know you're going to say no because it disappeared on me. All right, I am the guys who are watching our webinar, please say yes that you see my screen and that you're seeing Mike's um, graphic that says Balloon Shop Pro. All right. Yes, they're seeing it. All right. So, Mike, you're a excellent. <laughs> Great. Brilliant. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for taking your time to uh, to have a look at this today. I know you're all very busy. It's uh, three o'clock Eastern Time, I believe, in America, and it's eight p.m. at night here in the UK. So, uh, I'm still going, and I'll be going for a few more hours yet, but not with this. Don't worry. So, this is Balloon Shop Pro. Where did Balloon Shop Pro come from? It was a case of Myself and my wife have been running a balloon business in real in the United Kingdom for every occasion balloons for 10 years now. And we'd looked at several EPOS solutions. Um, the thing we found was, because our business is so specialist, there isn't the right thing out there for the balloon business that will handle everything the way that we need to do it. Um, my brother has worked in IT for getting on for 30 odd years now. And uh, he was made redundant beginning of last year. And I said, well, I've got a project for you. Um, he had no work, and we got together and we developed Balloon Shop Pro. Uh, we've been running the system for about since about June last year in our store. Um, we launched to the UK in October, and we've got a few clients in the UK now. And we launched internationally at the World Balloon Convention just last month. So I'm going to kick straight in with Balloon Shop Pro. This is the screen that you would see on your till or your EPOS system, or your laptop, or your computer, 
every day. It runs on Windows, it'll run standard Windows PC. If you're a home user, it'll run on a laptop or a home PC. If you're running it in a storefront, again, you can still run it on a PC. We recommend a touchscreen EPOS terminal. Um, they can be sourced locally in your own country. Um, the software, I'm going to be using a mouse today, um, but everything I do with the mouse, you can do on touchscreen. So system, when you first go to it, is locked down. Nobody can actually do anything on here. All the buttons are locked down. That's stop people messing about touching fingers. Every user has a login. Now, we use a card just like this. hope you can see that OK. Um, and it's just got a barcode on the back. And this is something we provide for you. And these are security logins. So I'm going to scan that with my uh, barcode scanner. And you'll see that the, the screen's changed color. Now, every user has their own login. So Saris is orange, for instance. I use a bright blue. And you can customize that. So you can see straight away which member of your staff is logged into your system. Um, we have three types of transaction that we do on a daily basis in a balloon store. We do an immediate transaction, which is a walk-in where somebody will come in, buy something off the shelf, or pick a bouquet, or what have you, and they'll go away, and that's it, transaction over. We've also then got collections where somebody would order something today to collect maybe next week, next month, even next year. Um, and that's a collection. And then we also have delivery transactions. So I'm going to do a quick, simple, immediate transaction. So a customer's just come in. They've picked one balloon off the shelf. So I scan the barcode. The balloon comes up. We do the sale. Obviously, I've got this all set in pounds at the moment. We have this set so it will work in virtually every currency and handle tax systems from around the world. Um, so this customer's come in, the balloon was £3.30, they paid me £5 in cash, the system checks to see if I've given the customer change, we click OK, and then what this would do now is it would go away and it would produce a receipt for us. Obviously I haven't got a uh, thermal receipt printer set up so you can all see it, um, but what I have got is one here just to show you. So this is the sort of we see this coming off. We use orange paper. You can use whatever color paper you want. I um, hope you can all see that. Okay. So that's an immediate, nice, quick, uh, nice, quick transaction done. So now we'll move on to collections. So this is a customer who's come in and they want to order a bouquet. Now the problem with bouquets is they can be set designs in a portfolio, but they can be made up from any balloon in your store. And this is where other EPOS solutions fall down because they'll allow you to do kits, but they have to do a kit for every permutation of every balloon you've got. Balloon Shop Pro doesn't do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first off, I'm going to se select my customer because we need to know who this is for. Now this is an existing customer. We could be adding new customers. Um, but I'm going to do a search. Now here we could search by loyalty card. So if they've got a loyalty card, we can scan that, which again has got a barcode on it. And I'll go into the loyalty card system a bit further down the line. We can search by forename, surname, contact number, and postcode or zip code. So I'm going to uh, just search by surname here. And you'll see here we've got the customer number, the customer's name, the postcode, and then we've got history. Now, I don't know about you, but we get customers coming in all the time saying, oh, you know, last year I came in, I did the, you did this for me, do you remember what it was? And there's not a chance that uh, I can remember. Well now I can click on history, and from when you start the system, the system starts recording for every customer their history. So you can see, one, what they had when they had it, but more importantly, you can get an idea of how much this customer likes to spend. So straight away, you know what sort of target spend you're looking at with them, sort of around £50 there. Um, so you know what sort of a case to be targeting that customer straight away rather than starting low. Okay, so I'm going to select my customer, and this customer's just picked, they've been to our bouquet book and they've picked what we call a birthday classic bouquet. So obviously you have all your bouquets set up in the system, and I can show you how to do that uh, a little bit later on. I put in birthday classic, it's brought up three options for me. So I'm going to select birthday classic and we want one of these. Now the system's asking me to scan foil number one. Now the system knows that this bouquet is made up of two foils and a weight. So I'll scan my first foil. I'll then scan my second foil. 
and then I'll scan my weight. And that could be any combination that we've got set up on the system. So it could be bubbles, it could be different foils, super shapes. What we don't do, and the system will let you do it if you want, is we don't stock control latex balloons purely because they just, every time one pops, you'd have to do a stock adjustment. It just gets messy. You can order through the system for balloons, but we don't actually stock count them individually. Um, Mike, quick In question. Here, yeah, sure. Um, are the loyalty cards that you just talked about, are those provided, um, or do they have to create them with the customer barred cord? Um, we, we're actually looking to get a printer at the moment where we can provide them, or you can create them yourselves. I mean, the ones we do at the moment are just a business card, and the barcode, we just print with our simple barcode printer and then laminate them. But we are looking at um, getting plastic cards made, well, we're looking at getting a plastic card printer at the moment that we'll be able to offer that service. But you can actually order them online in your own country as well. So, yeah, they can be, uh, they can be ordered anywhere. And um, can they add customer details for immediate orders? Absolutely. Absolutely. I didn't do it then because I just wanted to show you a quick... Um, quick immediate order, but again for immediate orders, if the customer's got a card or if you want to just add a customer there and then you can do that as well. Thank you. No problem. Right, so on here I've got uh, happy birthday pink latex and I click OK. This notes box we can put in whatever notes we want in there, so if we wanted specialist latex or anything like that we could actually put that in there and we click OK. And that's set our bouquet up there for us. Now you'll notice on here, this is our main screen. You've got the item code, you've got the description, you've got your unit price, your quantity, you can adjust your quantity up and down. You've also got these buttons over here. So we've got discount at the moment, that's just showing a percentage sign. If we click on that, it's going to ask us for a manager override. <coughs> Excuse me. This is stop your staff being able to give discounts as they like. So it'll always ask for a manager override. So if I put 10 in there, that'll reduce my unit price by 10%. And it puts a tick in there to show me that I've got a discount. And if I hover over it, I can see it's 10%. The notes screen there, if I hover over that, it's bringing the notes up. That takes us back through to this box where we put the notes in. hope that makes sense. OK. So we've got our order on there. And we click. we need to pick a date and time. So we're going to click and we're going to say this is going to be collected on Friday at 11 a.m. We'll click the sale. Now this customer here, you'll see, has got points. So the loyalty scheme, when we go into the admin screen, I can show you exactly how that's set up. But you can actually set up your own levels of loyalty scheme. We have a basic system set on ours at the moment where every time a customer spends a pound, they get a point. Each one of those points, when they redeem it, is worth a penny. And that appears on here. So this customer here has got £10.21's worth of points on their uh, on their loyalty card. So we're going to use those to pay for the order. There's £10.21 in points, leaving us a balance of 508 which they're going to pay on a credit card. And we complete the transaction. Now, what this does then is bring up this screen for you, which is your sales order. You don't have to have this screen come up. You can just get your laser printer to print two copies of the order, one for yourself and one for the customer. Um, we have this set up so it comes up on the screen. So it's showing me the full sales order. And it also gives me the ability to email that direct to the customer. So rather than giving them a copy, we can email that direct to them. And if I click on email, that picks up their email address direct from the customer record. So we'll see on here, we've got the bouquet, which foils it's made up of, which weight, and any notes we put in there. So they all appear on there, so that acts as a job sheet then. That can go in plastic wallets, in a binder, and that becomes your work diary, so you know what work's going out. We can see down here the breakdown. Now the other thing you can do with Balloon Shop Pro is you can take a deposit payment today of, say, £5, and then they may come in next week and pay another £10. If that's a wedding or a pre-booked party for next year or whatever, we have some customers that come in, they'll order now and just pay like £10 off a month until next year and things like that. So the system handles complete part payments as well. 
Um, we get a tax breakdown, and then we get the loyalty points here. So we can see the points that we had, how many points we redeemed, and the points this sale, and what points the customer's now got. Okay, so that is a collection. It tells us on their collect from shop, and it also only puts this paid in full graphic on when it's paid in full. Your logo appears at the top as well, and this is the due date and time when it's due to be delivered or collected. Okay, so that was a delivery, uh, a collection, sorry. Um, I'll take you now to the delivery. Um, the reason we split these is because in our shop, staff used to forget to do things. They forget to take a delivery address. They forget to take a delivery date and time. They forget to take a customer's phone number. So we put all the traps in to, to stop these things happening. Um, so if I click a delivery and we'll search for a customer, and again, we'll use the same customer so we can keep an eye on what we're doing. Okay, and we're going to deliver this on the 14th at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And with this one, I'm just going to do this as a simple transaction. Bear me one second. And we're just going to do some big numbers. So we scan the numbers in. And scan two weights in, and that's got that's what this customer wants delivering. So we go to click sale, and it's telling me I haven't set a delivery zone, so we haven't charged for delivery. So if we click OK and go to the delivery button, we've got our zone set up here. Now these again can be done by zip code, by target, by area. You can have where it says zone one, zone two. That can be whatever you want it to say. Uh, we have our set up with a target in our shop, so zone one is, I think it's about five miles, something like that, and then zone two goes out and out, and each zone is a different charge. So we pick zone one. If you then wanted to discount that, you could give it a 100% discount as well if you wanted to do free delivery. So we click sale again, and it's telling us we haven't assigned a delivery address. If we click delivery address, there aren't any there, so we need to go into our customer, amend our customer and add a delivery address and we can have multiple delivery addresses so this could be a venue this could be a Hilton hotel for instance um, Chester we can add that or we can also add the home address if we do that that pulls the home address down for us and into there we amend the details we go back and pick our delivery address we'll send it to the home address click sale that will now let us go through and do the sale and I'm just going to do a £10 cash on this one and that's leaving a balance on there for me so they've only part paid it's telling me there's an outstanding amount just to check that I've done it right click OK and you'll see the paid in full is missing now you've also got a delivery address and your delivery amount is on there as well and you'll notice now there's no points on here because we don't allocate any points until the order is paid in full. So that's a delivery. Is there any questions on the actual putting the transactions in before I go into the admin side, which is where we're heading next? Just a second. Um, does it allow for changes to be made in the order after a part of a payment is made? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, that order we've just done, I'm just going to recall that now. I can show you that. Um, we, at this point now, um, you saw on the screens there was a barcode on each delivery number. We could scan that. Um, I haven't printed them off, so I'm just going to search for the 14th, I think we said. Yeah, there it is. We display that order. And on there, we could say we want two of those. And that'll just change the amount outstanding for us. And likewise, we could take them off if we wanted to. And it'll just it'll adjust the final amount that's outstanding. So yes, you can change all those, no problem at all. All right, and then another person had the question, are all the buttons customizable to their individual needs? And is a system built to handle non-balloon UPC items? Absolutely, absolutely. It can handle any barcodes at all. All these appear are categories, which we'll go into when we go into the admin side. 
um, but you can decide which categories appear on these uh, on these buttons so it's totally customizable and we also have a favorites button here which we can actually say by individual item what are your favorite items you want to put on here and that can be multiple pages as well okay great excellent okay so one thing I didn't <laughs> sorry another one just popped up sorry. Can this, that's okay can this be loaded on their store PC and home laptop at the same time you'd need to buy a license for each de each device it's like buying Windows or Office or anything like that it's licensed per unit that it's on okay thank you okay um, so the difference between the immediate transaction and the collection or delivery is that when the immediate transaction is done it actually does your stock movements for you so it'll take items off your stock control if it's a collection or a delivery it doesn't take the items off your stock control the reason being you may be taking an order today for an order that's next year so you don't want to actually allocate that stock at that moment in time you can if you want but we tend to take orders and then maybe a month month at a time make the orders up we put them in a box in separate boxes for the customers so we know that, that stocks allocated and we know what we need to order so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, save that one with the changes we made I'm going to recall one of the orders we've done today um, search sales order do from there okay so we've got some here that say made up and say some say they're ordered and some say they're complete because they've already gone out of the system so this system status that says ordered has got a button here on the action that says made up make up so if we go into here this shows us the items that we've uh, that we need to make up the order so it's shining star hot pink we require one we haven't packed any away yet we've got one to pack we've currently got four in stock We've none on order from our supplier, and we don't need to buy any. Um, so I'm going to put in there one, and you'll see it'll go green. If for any reason I overpack that, so if I put two of those in, it'll go red. That's giving me a warning that I've put too many in the box. I just go back in and set that to one. And my bloom weight there, I set that to one. You'll see the packing status now has gone made up. When I click save, this will go and take those items off my stock and allocate them ready for that customer. I've also got a column here at the right hand end. Now, if any of these were zero, so let's say that was current stock was zero, I can actually put in here to buy that I need one to fulfill that order. What this is doing is it's building a shopping list up. So anything I haven't got in stock, it'll build that up. And when we come to our purchase order later, I know I've got these in stock, but I'm just going to add them in just so you can see what I mean. Um, when we come to doing our purchase order later, we actually go through and we look at the packing list, which is the shopping list, and that will tell us what we need to order to fulfill any orders that are uh, that are outstanding. I hope that makes sense. When a customer comes in and collects their, their order or their collection, again, if we search sales order, and again, on here, you can scan the barcode, you can search by customer surname, forename, sales type, packing status. I'm just picking delivery date just to bring them up. Okay, once the order, customer comes in to collect, you just click collect. And that's that order, the action now has changed to so say there's no further action to take. So that's the journey of an order through the system. We'll now look at the, the interesting bit from a business owner's point of view, and that's what goes on in the background. Okay. Um, One of the quick questions that um, we had is, yes, are sure. your daily transactions able to be uploaded to an accounting software program such as QuickBooks? Right, we do. At the end of the day, there is a day-end report, which I, I will come to. It's on here. And that produces two, a two-line entry. One is your cash sales for the day and one is your card sales for the day with your tax. You can then enter those in. We haven't done an upload automated because there are that many different accounting systems out there to do it with. Um, we've got people using Sage, people using QuickBooks, people using Excel on it. So there was such a wide range of different ones out there 
we decided to do a report which is a simple two line entry into your into your daily sales into QuickBooks or what have you. Thanks. Okay. Right, so this is the admin control panel and you only set access for this for your managers, yourself and, uh, and what have you. <clears throat> On here we'll start with the, uh, the stock control line. So the, uh, the stock take is just for bringing your initial stock in. Um, we use a little, uh, little app that produces a CSV file that then comes into the stock take. It's something we actually work, work through with you. We can load the CSV file in and load your current stock into the system. Catalog update. Um, we work very closely in the UK with uh, Pioneer Europe and when they produce new catalogs in the UK we actually upload it to all our customers um, in different countries we're actually partnering with different distributors at the moment and we may well be able to upload their catalogs into your system for you so as an example on the catalog update now I know that I've got the new European Partyware catalog is ready to load into the system so it's got all the items here so I've got all the different banners the door banners drinking straws everything like that um, it works out my cost price based on a discount and it, I can tell the system which department and which category I want to put this in and then I put my sales prices in here as well. I can also put my minimum stock, my safe stock and my overstocked in there if I allow returns and if I allow people to buy multiples on one line of the EPOS screen. Um, so that's how we get catalogs in. Um, it's something that happens very rarely and as part of our support package we actually guide you through that step by step. I just wanted to quickly gloss over that because uh, because I had a catalogue available to show you. I don't usually demonstrate that. Um, so stock control. This is where all our stock and all our items are. So we've got all our bouquets on here, which are non-stock controlled items and lots of decor items and things like that. Um, these SKUs that we've used are just our own in-house ones. They're not commercial SKUs. Um, there are our own in-house ones that we use for our own bouquets and everything and we can work with you to set those up for your system. Um, they go on forever and then we start getting into down here somewhere, there's all the bouquets, lots of bouquets. You can see we do lots of different bouquets in our shop. And then we start getting onto actual actual items and you can see the stock items on here. So I can search for a particular item, so if I do a search down here for that one item, so our shiny star hot pink we keep coming back to. It will tell us if we hover over stock, we've got three in stock, our minimum stock, safe stock and overstock levels um, are shown there, but if I actually go into the record, this is a stock record, so we've got our SKU, our item name and description, um, we just copy the same one straight through, but if uh, in the future we're looking at possibly doing plugins for Amazon, eBay and things like that so you'll be able to put a detailed description on each item. Uh, the model number, the department, so the system can categorize um, every item in departments as well as categories so you can have standard foils under balloons, you can have a party wear department, you can have a cards department, you can have plush and then under that you can have separate, um, separate categories as well. We've got our brand on there, our sales price, and then our cost prices from each supplier that we buy from as well. We've got our current stock on here. Then we've, these are our safe minimum stock and safe stock levels and our overstock levels. So these are what the system uses when it's creating our purchase orders each week um, to send off to our suppliers. So it tells us when we get to two, we need to order more in. We want to keep up to a level of five, so it would tell us we need to order three, for example, in this, uh, in this instance. Returns allowed if we allow customers to return faulty balloons. If it's an active product, so we can stop products being active so they don't actually show in the system, but we've still got the historic data from them. Um, we can allow multiples, so with this one we would allow customers to buy more than one of this balloon on one sales transaction line. Things like a personalized balloon, we wouldn't allow multiples. Um, that being if customer wanted five, five personalized balloons, there'll be five separate lines on the EPOS main screen so that you can put notes in for each personalization because each balloon may be different. Is it a stock controlled item? Yes it is. 
do we want to shortcut it on our favorites button that's the favorites button on the front epos screen that we were talking about on here we don't want to shortcut this one but that's the tick that you would tick for that and individual items I'll come to in a second okay so if we're going to into here now and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to search for our bouquet just to show you how bouquets are set up slightly different to barcoded items okay so we've got our birthday classic that we were using our example earlier if I go into there you'll see again it's got an SKU it's got an item name and a description it's in a department it's a category of QBB now it's a Qualtex Bloom Boutique which I don't believe I think it's just launching in the US um, I know we've got it in Europe um, it's a, just a, a sales way that Qualtex are doing now with Bloom stores where they're providing a bouquet of, of designs that you can um, that you can sell and it just allows me to know what QBB um, bouquets I've sold and I can use that for reporting there's no brand we've got our sales price on there there's no minimum safe and overstock levels on these um, we do allow returns it's active we'll allow multiples but down here you'll see we've got individual items now if you recall when we were putting the um, bouquets on earlier we uh, we selected foil one foil two and the weight and these are just pure text prompts that you just type in hit add and put in there I wouldn't but ribbon for instance um, and you can just uh, alter whichever prompt you want in there so if it was a bubble and a foil you can put those in there so you can build your own bouquets up so the system then when you sell it knows what balloons it needs to do the stock movements on so that's that's the actual stock control screen if we're now going to stock adjustments because we do have to do stock adjustments from time to time um, we may have used a balloon so let's say we've used this balloon we've used one of those and we've used it in a shop display so that's taken that item off stock for us and we know where we know where that's gone we may have had um, a sample sent to us from a supplier so we scan what it is and we just put and all this is doing is literally doing stock movement in or out of the stock uh, now the other thing that obviously happens in our industry is blooms pop blooms have holes in them <coughs> blooms have faults on here we can actually report on that so I'm going to say this balloon here one of them was faulty had a fault on it and if I go down to damaged I can actually put the reason on here so hold by seam and I personally just make a note of the batch number as well on there and it's telling me what goods received no notes I actually ordered this balloon on so that allows us to actually record any damaged balloons we've had we then um, once a month or whatever period you want to do you can do breakage and supplier returns so we get all our breakages together we go into here and we select our supplier and we go into Pioneer Europe for instance we can set a date range if we want and this is showing all the problems hold by seam, hold by seam and you can see the batch numbers there and that's just telling us all the ones we've had problems with we can choose whether to process these or not I'm going to tag all and I process that what that's done now is generated a report to go to my supplier telling me everything that was faulty excuse me what the problem was which invoice number it was bought on the invoice date and the item code they then go back to my supplier and I email that across and then credit notes are raised or replacement products can be sent out whatever arrangement you have with your supplier but it allows you to actually keep a track of where you've got faults and actually claim that back so that you're not out of pocket because at the end of the day we all want to make money not lose money is everybody okay with that so far on the stock side of the system before I go into our purchase orders? Cool. Currently, I don't have any stock questions up. Guys, anything you want to ask them on that part? Nothing currently. That's good. Right, so I'm going to go into now how we get stock from our suppliers into the system. So if I go into purchase orders, um, I'm going to create a new purchase order. 
I'm going to pick my supplier. I keep using Pioneer because I've got that in as test data at the moment on here. So I click go and anything in red is below my safe stock value. So I could go in and manually add these to the order. But that could be quite a, a laborious task. So what we do is the first thing we do, if you recall when we were making up the orders, we started putting there to buy column and making a shopping list of what we needed. So if I click the import packing button, this is going through now and bringing through what we needed to order. So we need to order a Shining Star Hot Pink, we need to order Elegant Sparks and Swirls, but we needed to order one black weight, but we have to order these in 12. So the system knows we have to order in 12s and it'll bring up a quantity of 12 for me. We can obviously increase these if we want more of them um, to fulfill orders. The next thing we do is hit order low stock. That's just gone through my complete system and it's worked out what we need to order. So we've got bubbles there, we've got numbers. Anything that was below minimum stock, it's gone through and it's created that purchase order for me. I can obviously alter these numbers and have more or less of them. I can say, well, I don't want to order that this week, so I can remove that. What we would then do in, in our store, and it's purely because of the way we're set up, but it just works for us, is we have all our latex balloons in jars, so they're, they're visible. We can see if, they, if we need to order in more pearl white, 11 inch pearl white, for instance. We can see that jar's getting low. We would grab that jar off the shelf, and on each jar we've got the barcode off uh, one of the bags and we would just scan that barcode and that would just add it to the order so we can order all our latex in that way. Same with ribbons, we do that visually as well. But this is everything else that's, uh, that's on the system, so all my foils, all my bubbles, uh, any accessories, anything like that, all my weights, they're all on there and the system calculates all that out for me. So we create our purchase order and this is saying do you want to receive this order now? The system for purchase orders can be used two ways. It can be used the way I'm about to show you, which is where we take the order, email it off to the, to the supplier, and then um, the order arrives and we bring it into the system. Or we may have gone to wholesalers. Now, if we've gone to wholesalers, we could actually, instead of doing the, um, the order low stock and everything, we could just scan our items that we've bought in. That would create our purchase order. And then if you hit receive now, it brings it straight into the system for you. Um, we don't want to receive this now at this point, and it's brought up our purchase order. This again can be emailed straight off to your supplier, or you can ring it through or take it with you to the wholesalers, whichever way you prefer to work. So that's got our whole purchase order of everything we need to order on there. And again, it's got a tracking barcode at the top. <clears throat> so we've emailed this order off, a couple of days later the box has arrived, and we need to bring all the stock in and make sure it came in. So, if I just make a note of that, 6093. We can see we've got an open purchase order there. So we're going to go to goods received, and I'm going to create a new goods received. I would scan my purchase order. Obviously I'm not scanning at the moment, I'm just keying it in. And that's brought up my purchase order and everything that's outstanding at the moment. What I would then do is I would, as I got something out of the box, I would scan it in. So let's have a look. I know that's on there. So you'd scan that. The system would come up and tell you you ordered three. Have three come in? Yes, they have. They may not have done. There may only be two come in, so that would leave an item outstanding. Um, or we can click on the plus and enter them that way. So I'm going to imagine now that I've scanned everything in. So I've hit receive all outstanding create my goods received now and that's brought my order in as received. You can see here I've got some part receipts, that's because I've got items still on back order that weren't available at the supplier and we can report on those later in the system. If an item is on back order it will not bring it in when you do order low stock because it's waiting for it to come in, you've already ordered it. When we've completed our order and the invoice has arrived we can click here and put the invoice number in and the invoice date and that's used when we go back to do our breakages and supply returns so it knows which invoice number those items were on. So that's purchase orders, goods received and then obviously supplier amendments is just where we set our, uh, our suppliers up.
with all our different contact details, contact numbers, our account number, the address of the supplier, etc., and tax rates as well. Does that all make sense? I'm yeah. hoping so. Cause it's very, <laughs> very quiet. What? It's very quiet, so I'm hoping it makes sense. <laughs> I haven't gotten any other questions pop up. One of the questions that came to my mind is, do you have any balloon decorators that use this that do not have stores, or is it only stores that are using it? At the moment, it's only stores that are using it, but you can see from this that you may not be doing immediate transactions, but you're still going to be doing uh, collections and deliveries, so the whole system will work from that point of view. You still need to keep your inventory. You still need to uh, keep track of what orders you've got coming in and out and what you need to buy to fulfill orders. So, as I say, it will work for both. Um, we have got some home decorators quite interested in them. They just haven't committed to buy them. Um, they're just ongoing negotiations at the moment. Right. Yeah, just a lot of them have been asking me about inventory systems lately, and this looks like that would handle that end of things it, for them. It does handle it. And obviously, because it can all be put away in boxes in, uh, in a storeroom or whatever, and you can go to this system and know exactly how many of a balloon you've got purely by going on stock control and scanning the balloon or doing a search by the barcode, the model number or even by the description and say I've got five, I know I've got five, they're away in box number whatever. So you can actually keep a track of your stock without having to physically look at it packed away in boxes. Great, thank you. Okay, um, running cash totals. Actually we'll do the maintenance first, we'll do the maintenance and then we'll come back to the business information. Okay, so date blackout. This was a really important feature of the system that uh, that I was absolutely so important that we put in there. Um, purely because last year, as an example, before we got the system running, um, we'd booked a job working away further down the country. We'd usually go down on a Wednesday and we'd work right through till the Sunday. We do get a day off during that. Um, and somebody had booked a job in for the Friday night while we were away. And that was a bit of a problem. It meant we had to drive all the way back up here to do the job and then drive back down to do the job the following day. Um, with date blackouts, we can actually black out certain dates in the diary. So we can black out every Sunday if we want because we're not doing anything on those Sundays. Um, or you can black out individual dates and they just appear on the diary. Um, so that's gone there. If you then try and do a transaction, so let's have a look at the 7th of May. If I go and try and take a collection on the 7th of May, the system comes up saying the selected date is no longer available and a management override is required. Now, that doesn't mean we can't take an order on that date. We can, but it will need a manager to actually scan their card and authorize it. So it just gives you a bit of a heads up to say, okay, why is that date not available? And it also stops staff taking bookings without management authorization if you black the date out. So it's uh, a really useful feature in the system. Um, point of sale shortcuts. So this was, we had a question earlier if we could customize what the buttons were. We can obviously have lots of different categories. They then appear in here in the shortcuts and we can switch on which buttons appear on that screen. So which categories are there is dependent on which boxes are ticked on here for all the categories. Um, department amendments allows us to set our departments up. Um, we use departments for seasonal as well, so we can see under Father's Day, we can see all the standard foils, all the super shapes, all the bubbles and everything, and report on that uh, based on department as well. Our categories for all our different categories for all our products. Business details is your business details and your logo. Um, one thing I didn't show on the um, the thermal receipt is you can actually have your logo at the top of here as well. Um, loyalty scheme. So this is where I was talking earlier about setting up the loyalty scheme. So if we wanted to add a new scheme here, we could say for every point, so this customer could earn five points for every pound spent, and then for every point that could be worth uh, 0.10, 10 pence, and we call that silver, for instance. So you can have multiple schemes, and each customer can be a member of whichever loyalty scheme you choose to have. Um, so that that is a totally flexible system. 
Uh, user access is what it says. It's where you set your users up, and it's where you set the uh, the color that they want to use for their backdrop, for instance. Leave that on orange, um, and their passcode as well. Um, system settings is where we do all the initial setting up of the system. Um, it's where all the backbones of the system, which printers it's going to print to, which cash draw is going to kick if you're using a cash draw, um, which um, email accounts and all that sort of thing are all in there. Um, it's there's lots of different data settings. The backup settings as well. We recommend that customers use uh, Dropbox, and all our customers are using Dropbox now um, to backup so that. Every time you quit the system, the system will generate a backup, which will go straight up to Dropbox. It's off-site, it's perfectly secure, and uh, it's there if we ever need to restore it in the event of a, uh, a system crash or anything like that. Um, you can also change the text that's on your system footer. So at the bottom of all your receipts, I don't know whether you can see that, but you can actually set a, fo a footer on the bottom of your receipts, and that could be Merry Christmas or, or what have you. Have you got a question there, Joy? Um, one of the questions is, does the software come in Brazilian, Portuguese, or any other languages? We're actually working with partners at the moment discussing languages with distributors, because obviously for us to convert the language um, is quite an expensive um, process. Um, we are looking at a language conversion at the moment, which will probably come on stream probably within the next 12 months. Uh, but that's something we're working with distributors on. At the moment. Okay. Okay. Um, obviously, any uh, any of this sort of thing you can put in 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 any language you like. But all the grey buttons and everything actually hard coded into the system at the moment is only available in English. Um, brand amendments we've done, I believe. That's just all our different brands of all our different products. And then payment code amendments. Now, what these are is. Um, we may have the window cleaner come, for instance, and we want to pay him out of the till in cash, just as an example. Um, or we may go to the post office, we use cash out of the till. We don't want that. We want our till to balance all the time. So what this allows us to do is take expenditure out of the till or also have cash coming into the till without it affecting our actual shop sales. Um, and just allows us to put the codes in for that. I'll show you how they work on the next screen. Okay, so we're going to go to the business information now. So our running cash totals tells us how much cash and how much card payments are in the uh, in the till at any one time. The system doesn't connect up to any card terminals. We always recommend that the customer keeps their card terminal separate, but just use the system to record that those card payments are separate to the cash payments, if that makes sense. Float allows us to add float into the system, as you would expect. So that's increased the cash on the system. Um, other payments was what I was talking about before. So in here, I'm just going to put in the LJ Evans, for instance, window cleaner, four pound. We take four four pound out of the cash draw. That generates this sheet of paper that we can then attach our receipt to and keep that for our accounting. And Lyft allows us to take money out of the till. So at the end of the day. I would total up my card machine, make sure that that balance is there. I'd do a lift. I'm not taking any cash out at the moment because I'm going to carry all my cash over to tomorrow, but I am going to take the card payments out. So that's accepted. So then at the end of the day, I would do that and then I'd do my day end report. So if I pick today's date and review, this is showing me on here the cash pot, the card pot, my total. It tells me my opening money in draw. Any floats I've added to the system, any other incomes, any operating expenses, so there's our window cleaner, any lifts from the system. It also then tells us less tax, our tax amount, and our total sales. And what this does, if you click onto these, you can actually get a breakdown as well of that, of each item in there. If we click preview, this takes us to our day end report. So these are our two lines for uh, for our accounts, so our net, our tax, and our gross sales for card and for cash. Our closing balances, so we've got our opening balances at the top, our closing balances at the bottom, 
and then we'll do a counting sheet for every country obviously. Uh, our total here should add up to our total there. If it doesn't, we've got a problem, we go back and we find it. But that's uh, that's how we're balancing our till each night. So that's our day end report um, for every day that we're in business. You don't have to print these on the day, we recommend you do, but you can go back and print historic ones as well. Before I go into the main reporting engine, any questions on that so far? I'm currently not seeing any. That's good. Excellent. Gave me a chance to grab a quick drink of water. So now we're in the reports. I'm not going to show you every report because we'd be here for the next four hours and I'm sure you don't want to be taking up all that much of your day. <laughs> but we can <laughs> and it we got midnight here as well. Um, We've got sales reports, so we can let's generate that one quickly. Just quickly, I've not put a date range in, so it's doing all of my data at the moment. There we go. So that's telling us every sale through the system, the customer, whether it's collection, delivery, or an immediate, and the full breakdown of all the sales. And you can do that for any date range, and obviously. It totals it up at the bottom for you. We can do reports by item. So we can actually generate a report there by by department. So we'd have balloon decor, we'd have total for that decor and each item. And again, we can do the same report by category. Uh, purchase report, so we can see what we've bought. Top 10 sales, that's by quantity. And also we can do it by actual amount. And again, likewise, our top 10 purchases, what we've bought most of, usually weight, because we use more of those than anything else in our store. And then how much we spent on a top 10 basis as well. We can get a full transaction report. So if I just pick today, for instance, we can get a full transaction report on there. I can hear your mic, Joe, in the background. Your mic's oh, still loud. you typing. No, it's okay. <laughs> It was just deafening me the typing. <laughs> um, we've got stock adjustment reports as well, so we can look at our stock adjustments for today. And we can see on there, generate the report. And uh, that tells us all our outgoings, whether it was a sale, if it was a breakage, the breakage is on there. And then we'll have all our stock incoming where we did our goods received as well. More importantly, we can also see the staff member was as well. So we can keep an eye on any stock adjustments and any uh, dishonest staff that may be taking stock off and just wandering off with it or whatever. You know, it happens, unfortunately. We're business owners, and sometimes that happens. Supplier purchases report is a useful one. Um, I had this report put in here because I was told by a supplier I wasn't spending as much on bubbles as I had in the past. So I did that generated the report and said, well, I'm spending this on Disney bubbles, I'm spending this on Deco bubbles, I'm spend, spending this on standard bubbles, so I am spending as much, and I am buying as much. And it gave me the power to go back to the supplier with a big stick and say, well, yeah, I am, you're not telling me what, what's right here. Um, and we can do a detailed report, which will tell us every item we've bought as well. Our back orders report, we were looking earlier at... Um, we could see we had some orders that weren't complete on the goods in. So we can see there what we're waiting for, what's not in. Um, another of my favorite reports, this one, is either sales or transactions by day and hour. And I will put the, both versions of this report in because some people like to say that a sale today is a transaction. So if money's gone in the till, it's a hundred pound sale today, it's a hundred pounds. Other people like to say, well, I took a booking for a wedding which is £1,000, but they only paid a £100 deposit today, so that's a £1,000 sale. I personally prefer to do it by transaction. So what this report does, if I generate this report, it tells me for every day of the week, for each hour, we've got obviously 0 to 8 a.m. and 6 till, till midnight are a block, but it tells us for each hour how much we actually sell over whatever date range we put in either cards, cash, or everything. We can then view that report in a graph. So we can see that Saturdays are good days, Tuesdays are good days, Wednesdays not so good, 
um, and it just allows you to look at that by day or by time and see that between 12 and 3 are really good times for us. We don't need staff after 5.30 night, obviously. Um, but it allows us to actually look and see when we need staff in and uh, helps us budget our, uh, our wage bill as well. That's great. It's, it's a really useful feature. It's, um, it, it's having all this information. Information is key. And, uh, and having this information at your fingertips as a business owner, can just it ends up making you more money because you become more data savvy, if you like. Um, we can do a current stock report. I'm not going to run it because it will take a while. Uh, but that lists all our stock in the system and gives us a stock valuation at the end so we know how much our stock is worth. Um, our faulty goods report, this was another big stick report, if you like. Um, I wanted to know, um, out of the faulty goods I was sending back, what, uh, what rate of failures I was getting. So, I mean, this is all test data that's on here. It's not live data. But if we're using this, for instance, I could see there that I bought eight of that balloon, I've had four failures, therefore I've got a 50% failure rate. And to go back to a manufacturer with this sort of data, and I did at WBC actually take my live data to Pioneer to show them uh, what failure rates we were getting because they wouldn't believe me and I've got the data and you have that there so you can use that as a stick to, uh, to hit your supplier really. Wonderful. Um, I, I like things like that, Joe. Can you tell? <laughs> yeah, that's, no, it's very uh, helpful. Information is key. Um, average sales reports tell us how many customers, how many sales, and average spend for collection customers, delivery customers, and immediate customers. And again, you can break that down by sales range or by card and cash. And then our loyalty scheme report will actually go through the system and it will tell us for each customer, how many points they're at and what their points are worth and tell us what we're actually uh, in, uh, in debt of, if you like, £435 worth of points in the system that customers could use at any one time. So you know how many uh, points you've got out there on cards for customers. All right. Um, We've got a new question. Okay. What is the biggest selling feature of this software that makes it different from any other POS software currently on the market? It's the fact that uh, there's two things actually, well three really. You've got your diary system, so you're creating your job sheets, um, which you can do for deliveries and collections. It doesn't allocate your stock until you want it to allocate the stock. But more importantly is when you've got your bouquets, um, we, we looked at a lot of POS systems before we even put one in our store and um, when you've got your bouquets, your bouquets are made up of individual items that need to be individually stock controlled. Now there's no POS we have found out there in the market that will allow you to do fluid bouquets like ours are. So you've got a bouquet, for instance the birthday classic we used before, that allows us to have any combination of foil 1, any combination of foil 2, and any weight in there from anything in our store. All the other systems we looked at said, yeah, you can do kits, and kits are great, and you can do that foil, that foil, and that weight. And I said, yeah, but that's for a 21st. I want exactly the same bouquet for a 30th, a 40th, a 50th, a 60th, a 70th, an 80th, and I don't just want it in black and silver. I want it in pink, I want it in blue, I want it in Rachel Ellen design. And everybody said to me, oh, you'd have to make a kit up for every single one of those permutations. Now, I stock probably about £10,000 worth of stock in my shop. And you can imagine how many combinations of one bouquet design I could have, let alone every bouquet, bouquet design I have. So the key thing really is the fluidity of that stock control, if that makes sense. It does. Um... Is there a time clock feature? How do you mean a time clock feature? Like I'm thinking they're asking about for their staff, so for their staff to log in and log out when they get to work. Like, um, No, there isn't, but there's no reason we couldn't report on that data. Um, we know who's used the system when because the data's in there, so we could generate a report that would tell you which staff used the system when. Um, it doesn't actually have a, yes, they started work at this time and they finished at that time, because that's 
that's more of a time plot system. It's not an EPOS um, sort of solution. Uh, one thing it does do that I didn't show you is um, if I exit that, if I log in as me and I start a transaction and then I go off to talk to that customer, I can sign out, another member of staff can come in, they can come in, do their transaction and, uh, and be working away. They could go off and talk to a customer and sign out. If I sign back in, my transaction's back there as well. So that's another thing that we've got on there so that and that's for every staff user. I've just got two on here, but that can be multiple staff um, can come back to the system to their transaction at any one point. And then the yeah, next the question is the cost of each license. The cost. Let's let's go on to that now then. Let's uh, let's get out of there and go back on here. So just just to recap, we'll quickly go through the, the benefits. So we've got a foolproof customer ordering system. We've got automated inventory saving you lots of time. We've got better security to monitor theft and wastage. We've got managing discounts and promotions. We can improve staff efficiency and reduce errors. Increase our profit margins. Build a customer database with a full order history, which again is another thing that I think is really uh, imperative with the system. Our in integrated customer loyalty scheme, our real-time data analysis, and our excellent essential business information. So, software-wise, uh, price-wise, it starts from less than $25 a week. There's two ways to actually buy the system. Um, Hardware-wise is down to you, but we will guide you through that and recommended suppliers, etc. Uh, but as I say, it'll run on any Windows PC. The software is $2,900 per license um, as an outright uh, purchase and then our service and support is $40 a month and that service and support gives you our support portal which is online so if you have a problem with the system you log on to there you put your problem on we respond to that within an hour uh, sorry not within now within 24 hours sorry um, we'll also if we need to connect into your system we set the system up so that you have a remote password and we can connect in when you give us the password and we can talk you through things and also when we have any updates to the system you get all the updates um, totally uh, in with that service and support as well so that's option one option two is our monthly contract um, again the service and support is still forty dollars a month uh, but the monthly contract is sixty five dollars a month which is payable by paypal to us once the payment hits our cloud server sends a new license down to your machine um, and that gives you another month on the system. So it's literally a month by month contract. If you didn't pay for a month, the system would stop working. Um, once you hit 48 months, you don't pay anymore. Um, that's the payment profile. I hope that uh, that all makes sense. Wonderful. So guys, this is your time if you have any other questions about what he just told you to type those up and we can ask him now. And then, Mike, if they think of other things tonight after they go to sleep, what is the best way for them to reach out to you? Uh, they can drop me an email to uh, mike at balloonshoppro.com. That's probably the easiest way. I'm also going to uh, drop Joe a link on our website that if you could take time just to go to that link. I think you were going to put an email out, didn't you say, Joe? Yeah. Um, just to everybody with a link on if you could take time just to go out there and fill your details in on there so that I know who's who's uh, been interested in this. And uh, for Joette's Blue Coach subscribe customers, I'm going to uh, give her a little uh, little offer on there as well to put to you on the pricing. So, uh, so Joette will send that information out to you. Wonderful. Are you done with your part of the presentation on your computer screen? I certainly am, yes. Unless there's any other questions, I'm all done. All right, great. So what I'm going to do is bring this down. All right, well, Mike, thank you so much for um, telling us about your system. I think what's nice about his POS system is it is set up by a person who has a balloon shop <laughs> and business and um, understands the ins and outs of things that we need. If you have questions about the particular system, please reach out to him and ask him. For those of you who are watching the replay, 
Um, again, you can um, email him. And Mike, say your email address just one more time. Is Mike at balloonshoppro.com. Mike at balloonshoppro.com. Great. And this um, is going to include the major information from Mike. And I just wanted to give a quick shout out. Again, if you've not been to the ballooncoach.com website, please go on and check out the things that we have going on. We have a monthly webinar. Our next one is coming up with Colin Miles in May on the 24th. And he's going to be talking about designing for profit. Colin is from Scotland and makes amazing, gorgeous sculptures um, for competition pieces and some things for worldwide events. But he also does beautiful for, for weddings and other events locally where he scales down those sculptures to make them affordable for his clients. Um, we have a free blog and you just click on it and information comes up from different um, people that I've interviewed and different topics that people ask me about. We have coaching and that's for people who are like, I'm not sure if I need a POS system or not. How do I decide? <laughs> you can um, work with me either in a group coaching, one-to-one -one or elite setting where we can talk about your business and the needs that you have and help you take your business to the next level. And then we also have two hands-on workshops that are coming up this summer. I'm going to be in Chicago um, with Balloons by Tommy from the 23rd to the 25th um, doing a three-day workshop with three other instructors. Um, we have the three major uh, manufacturers of Anagram Metallic and um, Qualitex sponsoring the event and bringing us balloons and instructors. And then on the 22nd, I'm going to be talking about business and it's a one-day workshop there in Chicago. So anyone is welcome to join us on the 22nd. Um, so if you are watching and have other questions, just send me a note, joette at ballooncoach.com, or t reach out to me on Facebook. Um, Mike, thank you so much for your time and being here today. We appreciate it. And guys, if you have any other questions, um, I see them coming up right now. Mike, do you mind answering just a couple more real quick? No, absolutely. I'm still here. Not a problem. Yeah. All right. Great. So the question is, um, sorry. <laughs> is there discounts on buying multiple licenses? Um, it depends on what the multiples are at the moment for up to five licenses. No, there wouldn't be. But after that, we are looking at a discount structure. Okay. And then can you suspend multiple sales? For example, if a customer forgot their wallet in the car and leaves the register, can you check out the next customer and then go back to the previous customer when they return? Yes, you can actually, uh, you can save an order rather than uh, actually pressing the sale button on that front post screen. There's also a save button. What that will do is it will save it. It will actually print out the uh, the job sheet for you with the barcode on. Uh, the customer can go off, get their wallet, or they can come back another day or what have you. Bring that back, and you can then take their payment there and then. Wonderful. Um, all right, and then somebody just asked me with the three-day workshop, um, will it be too advanced to bring a brand-new business owner? And the answer is no. Um, what I've done with the three-day workshop is we have Tommy and Scott that are our main teachers, plus we have Eddie Hayland, um, Dennis Scott, and um, Carolyn Heyman. So we have five instructors for our small group um, workshop setting. So there'll be lots of hands-on times with lots of instructors, plus I'll be there, and we have several other people who've worked with Tommy in the past on his parade. So um, Anybody in the industry from brand new to a 30-year veteran can learn and enjoy the workshop in St. Louis. I mean, sorry, in Chicago. <laughs> oh. uh, I wish I could get there. I really do. <laughs> um, that would be fun. Well, Mike, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. And for those of you watching the replay, um, please reach out to Mike with any other questions that you have about his program and reach out to me about anything that you need to know about Balloon Coach. Um, Tamika saying thanks, Mike. So um, we appreciate you being here and enjoy the rest of your evening with your family. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks a lot for your time. All right, guys. Have a good one. I'm ending the webinar now.